I will get into in, to the second part of my presentation, uh, which is about game art vision. Now, this is a very important topic for me as a game artist, uh, but also for you, I guess, as a future artists or coders, even coders, yes, uh, and designers. And this is something we feel very strong about at the HQU, uh, because to us, um, a game artist is a designer, and therefore a game artist's job, to me, is not make pretty pictures. It is communicating the game experience through art. So it has a very strong design component. Uh, when we get back to this model here, as you can see, um, for you guys on the right, yes, game design, and where do those two meet in the middle? So we have game art on uh, the, right, the right side, no, the left side, and game design on the right side. And when you look in the middle, I don't know if it's readable for you guys, but it says functional and interaction design. A game artist um, has the, j well, his job is to communicate to the player. And he's doing that by functional design uh, and interaction design. So that overlap is very important for a game designer because he has to understand how a design must be communicated. Um, and you see other components to the game art, uh, like creative, conceptual, artistic, analytic, and technical. Uh, of course, there are some more. But uh, to keep it clear, um, I've made a model like this. It's a work in progress, by the way, this model. Um, these things, uh, we circulate around the uh, HQU among the uh, people that work there and see how we can adjust and uh, iterate on that. So, not making pretty pictures but communicating a game experience through art. And what I'm going to focus on in this presentation when I get into the 3D software is about the bottom one, the technical one, because there's something going on between tech and game art because they interfere with each other. And I'm going to explain that uh, a bit more as we go through it. Because there are two things that, um, like I said, that has a very strong relation in the, with game art. Uh, I already said tech, construction, but it's also very rational what you're doing when you're doing technical stuff like um, polygons, uh, dealing with polygons, dealing with edge flows. How do I construct a character? And I'm talking about organic 3D modeling. I'm not talking about hard surface. And there's a difference between those two. Hard surfaces like armor or like a user object. Or, but organic is something like characters, uh, mountains, etc., etc. And on the other side, you see art, figuration, which is very intuitive. You know, if you have if you're in a creative flow, you want to, you know, preserve that creative flow. And you see they also overlap these two areas very much. So what I'm thinking about is that actually you should separate these two areas a bit more to get the most out of your uh, art. So basically this. Okay, I have to start the demo. Um, good, uh, well on time, because uh, I was about to. Um, yeah, so what you see here is that uh, pulling these two apart, you will always get some overlap, but um, it's a much better way to get um, 
Well, let's get, oh no, hey, where's the, yeah. So there are some takeaways I'd like to give you uh, tonight. Um, at first I thought uh, maybe 10. Well, that's way too much, so I, I brought it down to three. And so when you're pulling those two areas apart, um, so what you're doing actually is you preserve the soul or essence uh, from what you're making. And that starts, to me, with uh, uh, very basic art principles. And the second one is don't let the software determine or obstruct the creative work, uh, workflow process. What I mean by that is that, um, to give you a good example, um, when Maya, for instance, the 3D application um, we're working, we are working in, uh, was fir first constructed, it very much pushed the way how game artists uh, constructed organic um, surfaces by pulling polygons, vertices. So it's a very unnatural way of building something uh, very organic. And, and that's the technical part of it. You know, we have to think about polyflow and it interferes your very creative process. So what I'm trying to convey here is that don't let the software determine uh, how you work, but let uh, you as an artist should use the software um, how you want to. And I'm going to show that. So separate tech from art as uh, much as possible. Um, this is something I'm going into later. Um, so this concludes my second part of my presentation. Thank you.